So my name is Tom Oxley. I'm with the West Virginia Division of Forestry. I'm the Kanawha County Service Forester. Uh, my job entails uh, three main pieces of the division's work. I handle fire, all wildland fire in Kanawha County. I handle logging and inspect inspection of log jobs around the county and I do landowner assistance and assist the landowners of the state of West Virginia and Kanawha County in particular in helping them manage their properties, their, particularly their trees. Uh, today, however, one of the other things that we do is project learning tree. We're going to be doing a lesson, lesson number 81, out of the pre-K through 8 environmental education activity guide and it's called living with fire one of my jobs is fighting wildland fire so it goes without saying here we have the fire triangle the fire triangle is obviously a triangle made up of three sides heat oxygen and fuel you have to have all three of these elements in place at the same time in order to have fire if we in fighting fire, whenever I'm out in the woods, one of my goals is to figure out not only what kind of terrain there is, the weather, uh, how many people I have, but also what conditions or what opportunities are offered to me to take care of at least one side of this triangle to eliminate the fire. In other words, be able to control it and eventually put it out. So, heat, oxygen, and fuel. In particular, most of the time, I deal with eliminating the fuel that the fire wants to consume. So if we eliminate, as you can see on here, you can see that there is fire. And if I pull away the fuel, take the fuel away, no longer is the fire there. This is just the picture, but the red dot that was on there shows up. There you can see it. So if we take away the fuel, we take away the ability for the fire to continue to burn, okay? Any suppression activity that we use has to be able to eliminate one or more of those sides of the triangle in order to take care of and suppress the fire, okay? Now, structure firefighters deal with a tetrahedron, which is four-sided, okay? Theirs also adds in combustion, chemical reaction, okay? So for us, it's a little more simple. We either eliminate the oxygen, no fire. Eliminate the heat, no fire. Or we eliminate the fuel or multiple pieces, okay? So what we're going to discuss today are some of the things that eliminate a side of the triangle. Okay. So in your student pages, in the workbook, there's a student page that you all will have to be able to answer the questions on, but we'll review it today and that will give you an idea of how to take your students forward uh, with some of the questions you would ask. Now. One of the things in West Virginia that we commonly get uh, as a reason for fires is that, oh, somebody flipped a cigarette out their car window. Well, the U.S. Forest Service has spent a lot of money on studies, and cigarettes are 0.001% of all fires started in West Virginia because it takes four or five different parameters all happening at the same time for that to happen. So we don't get that in West Virginia. One, our relative humidities are always too high, okay? They're in the multiple digits, not in single digits. So without that, at least that particular piece being in place, we don't get cigarette fires. We get people, <laughs> we get people. That's 98% of our calls is people in the state of West Virginia. So on the fire triangle, it says, fire needs the heat, oxygen, and fuel in order to exist. 
We want you to draw the triangle below and label it. We've already got a good example here, so you all can do that. Uh, it says, what are some of the things that provide heat for ignition sources, both natural and human caused? Okay, natural. Uh, what do we get with storms that come through here uh, typically in West Virginia, what's one of the pieces of the, of the storm that will provide us a significant heat source? Lightning, that's correct. Lightning, however, with our lightning, what is usually falling out of the sky as the thunder and the storms are all happening? Rain. So for us in the east, we get rain with our, our lightning. Out west, they get dry lightning storms with no rain reaching the ground, and so we have to take that into account as a heat source. We get some lightning storms or lightning fires occurring, but not very many. Okay, another insignificant part. So that's the first natural cause. Another can be spontaneous combustion. Sawdust piles, things like that, as they dry out, they cause, they create heat and they will start a fire. Human caused, now we're into people. We have that dreaded one that because people intentionally set fires, those, that arson, okay? So we have somebody striking a match or lighting a lighter and setting the hillside on fire. Um, another can be equipment. Uh, we have equipment fires uh, we have uh, power lines that sometimes fall down uh, from storms that come through, creating enough heat. It says the fire needs fuel to burn. Name three potential fuel sources. So those fuel sources obviously are going to be the leaves that fall off the trees, the dead and dying brush, and man-made materials. Those those materials um, all provide fuel for the fire, be it on the hillside or somewhere into the edge of the woodland, okay? Oxygen is obviously needed for a fire. What, what are some of the ways we eliminate the oxygen from the fire triangle? Well, we can smother a fire with dirt and create a pack that will not allow the fire to breathe, which also will cool the fire. That takes care of another side, the heat, and then obviously the moisture that we get from rain will cool this side of the fire triangle. So again, whenever we cut off any one of the three sides of the fire triangle, we do what? We eliminate the fire's possibilities to burn, okay? So we'll take away the heat, no fire, okay? Uh, this is lesson 81, living with fire, and we'll talk about the last thing you'll see. Obviously, we have a candle. We have a candle burning, it's consuming oxygen out of the air, the fuel is on the wick, the wax. If we smother the fire and we take away the available oxygen, the fire goes out. So that's living with fire in a nutshell for PLT lesson number 81 and I'm Tom Oxley, have a good day. <laughs>